Good afternoon, everyone. This is Dr. Diggs. It's another beautiful day out here in the Pacific Northwest. Today, we're going to be talking about Project Triangle, the demo that was most recently released by Nintendo in the latest Nintendo Direct. It is a CRPG style game, very reminiscent of both Final Fantasy Tactics, Octopath Traveler, and what I personally believe is a mixture of Pseudocodin and Divinity Original Sin 2. Now that's a lot of games that I just listed, and no doubt people are going to try and pigeonhole this game into either being a Final Fantasy Tactics clone or an Octopath Traveler clone. The combat is definitely reminiscent of Octopath Traveler in some ways, but it doesn't really define or steal the Octopath Traveler identity. It really has its own identity in that the units are all individual and unique, and they are not based on jobs that you select or kind of have a class progression system. That is why it is very similar to Suicoden, I think. Now, there is kind of three things to know about this game. And those three things are morality, liberty, and pragmatism. This game is focused on the three of those things, and the decisions that you make are going to influence everything that you do in the game, from who's recruited, from story decisions and story executions that are made, to, you know, direct impacts in your combat. It's very in-depth. And this is split up into three phases of the game. Of course, you have your combat, which you do see on the screen right now. You also have a worldview screen where you can view story cutscenes and you can make decisions in those story cutscenes by either watching them or not watching them and then potentially recruiting characters from those scenes. And then of course you also have the decision making section of the game which is usually before every battle. Now this is really where you're going to lean heavily on either morality, pragmatism, or what's that last one? Liberty. So you're going to have to make decisions on, say, maybe if a main character lives. Are you going to give them up to the opposing castle? Or are you going to decide to step in and protect them? If you are going to protect them, if that's what you want to do as a player, if you want that person on your team, you're going to have to convince all of the other units and people that you're playing with, well, people being the other units, that that is the decision that is going to be right for them. Once everything's said and done, the combat does begin. Now, based on your decisions, you're going to have different units. And just like Suikoden, there is a boatload of units. And that is what makes this game so fun, is there's a unit for everybody. It does look a little bit kind of like Fire Emblem when you first get into the combat system but you will quickly realize that this is far and above away from Fire Emblem and the Holy Trinity system that Fire Emblem does employ. Let's go ahead and start the combat system and I'll show you guys what I mean because this game is just on an entirely different scale. Coming in here, the map is fully rotational. You'll see that there is gonna be an obvious goal. And this is the first mission of the game. I didn't want to spoil the second mission for you guys because for me, it was a really fun mission. And for those of you who are out there playing the demo, I would hate to take that away from you. Now, you do have to get to the bridge here to escape. Of course, you're going to have to activate that lever. This is a very standard tactical game mission, right? And initially, when you see this, you might be like, oh my gosh, so it's just going to be another like, run around and do missions and that's the end of it. Well, that's the first mission. What I would say is the second mission is far more complex and it really shows off what this system is capable of. Let's go ahead and I'll give you a couple examples here. So you notice the standard blue movement system, but then you notice there's a purple system here. And when you are moving to different squares, you can actually see what opponents are actually going to be able to target and attack that unit. So I'm gonna move our thief right here. And then you'll notice as well, 
when the ability menu moves, because she moved, and then now I have some ability options, you're gonna notice that Take Cover is active and Slumber Slash is not. That's because this has a stock system or an action point system very similar to Octopath Traveler. Now, how you get access to action points is you get one action point every single turn. So if I wanted her to gain an action point so that she could use Slumber Stab next turn, I would not use an action right now, or I would just attack with Iron Dagger. Now, there are multiple ways to get multiple action points, such as exploiting elemental weaknesses, exploiting physical weaknesses. Using a combo attack of sorts is very effective. There is a variety of ways, and no doubt when this game actually comes out, there's going to be tons of videos talking about all the different ways and combos to utilize your characters. Now, the Fire Emblem side of this, I mean, honestly, it feels like they just took the best from all the tactical RPG games and put it in one. We do have mounted combat units. And of course, they have enhanced movement. You notice this is our uh, horse character. We also have a hot character, which let's be honest, that should just be a chocobo because that's kind of what this should be. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and move our character here, and we are going to use an ability, his action point here. And we're going to go ahead and attack. Now, you might be worried, right? Because you can see that two units are able to attack this knight. And you might be like, Dr. Diggs, that knight is going to die. Also, if you caught it there, there was also an opportunity attack. So there are opportunities for units to catch additional attacks as well. We're going to have our bow unit go ahead and attack here. And then notice she can attack and then move, which is also very nice. Now, as far as I know, there's no CT system in this game, like War of the Visions or any other, um, like uh, Alchemist Code. But that doesn't stop this from, that doesn't stop me from not wanting to move my character. Now, we do have, of course, a variety of units. So we, of course, have um, buffing and offensive unit. So this is, of course, going to be the buffing character. And there's a variety of characters that can do very different things. So him is, is buffing. And what's probably most interesting is the upcoming Ice Mage character. We're gonna go ahead and move our knight right here and we're gonna attack with our long sword. And we killed one enemy. One thing I'm a little worried about looking at this combat system is that it is action-based, similar to Final Fantasy Tactics, which does mean it does have the potential to be exploited with either delaying a battle to self-buff, what have you. I'm hoping with the amount of variety char of characters you have that that's not going to be a huge issue. Now, of course, we do have our healer time mage character. She might as well be Ayaka. Also, let's just take a moment and realize that you can fully circle this map. The sprites are beautiful. You can get different angles. Let's just, it's a beautiful thing. It is absolutely a beautiful thing. Thank you. And now we're gonna get to probably the most interesting character I think in the game. You've seen all the archetypes. This is the tank character. And this is really where the game sets itself apart from a lot of other tactical RPG games. This is the Scholar class, and what he has access to is the Wall of Ice. Now, remember I told you that I was worried about those units attacking my knight? Well, now I'm worried about these guys attacking my Ice Mage, right? So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna create a Wall of Ice. And this is where the game really pulls from like Divinity Original Sin and other games that manipulate the terrain. That wall of ice can be destroyed, but it is going to protect my knight. It's going to stop this guy from making a huge movement. It's going to be amazing. The fact that you can manipulate the terrain like this is something I have never seen in a tactical game to this extent, right? Like we're familiar with Divinity Original Sin 2 where you can throw water on the ground and you can electrify it. But being able to do this in an actual tactical game is fantastic. It just feels so good when you pull it off correctly. And again, I don't want to spoil the final battle. That's why we're doing the first battle right now. But there are times in the final battle where I was solely able to win because I was able to route my enemy down a specific path using the wall of ice because the enemy didn't want to hit the wall of ice. The, they were just going to be routed by it and they were going to funnel themselves in into this little hole here 
and I was able to put my tank here and hold the line. It was absolutely incredible. It was, I've never had an experience like it in a tactical RPG like I have in this game. It is so incredible. You of course have your casting character here and I can of course give them a buff. Of course, there's gonna be elemental weaknesses and stuff. The other thing that I really love is the variety of characters and the versatileness of this game. When I was streaming this game, I did the whole demo over the course of a single stream. The amount of people that were in the stream telling me, you know, hey, do you have this character? Do you have this character? Do you have this character? There were probably at least three or four characters that people were talking about that I did not have because either I had made different decisions or I had done things in a different order than what was expected or what most people do. I would love to see in this game because I love this type this, this type of statistical information. Uh, very similar to, I think it was Persona 5 and Persona 4, where you can see the percentage of people that make the different decisions or go down the different paths. I would love to see something like that. Now, my husband would probably think otherwise because the last time we had a game like that was, oh my God, Giant, do you remember what that cyborg game was that we played? Cyborg? Yeah, where we made decisions and you hated me for getting the worst ending. Oh. Detroit, yeah. Yeah. Where I made the decision to go down the path that the most people didn't choose and it literally got us the worst ending and I'm pretty sure Giant was not happy about it because we were playing it together. Anyway, I would love to see that in this game. I would love to see a way to kind of access the branching storylines as well. Um, very similar to Langrisser. If any of you have played Langrisser, you do have the ability to go back and do different missions at different decision points, do things differently and progress the story in a different way. Would love to see that in this game as well. I think that's probably like the Langrisser feel is probably the one tactical RPG that I am not like feeling from this game and i think it could add a lot to it anyway guys if you have a switch i hope you've all downloaded this and are playing it as always i hope you all have a great rest of your week uh, if you do want to support me make sure you use my affiliate link uh you can go to dig.gs coins or go to dig.gs offer and as always guys have a great day enjoy your evening don't stress out too much